everybody my name's Liz I'm the baker that sews welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you're a subscriber as always it's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey so welcome back to one of my Sunday sewing catch-ups it's been ages since I did a Sunday sewing catch-up um, I enjoyed having a little bit of time with my family over Christmas and um, it's been really lovely but I am back today with episode 62 of my Sunday sewing catch-up as usual, I've got lots of different things that I want to share with you today, including what I'm wearing. This is something that I made over the festive period, and I've already talked about this in my Christmas catch-up video that I published a couple of weeks ago, where I talked about a couple of the dresses that I'd sewn over Christmas, and this was one of them. The reason I've got it on, I'm not going anywhere fancy, but I just wanted to wear it again because it's one of my favourite things that I made last year, so I thought, why not wear it for the video? So I'll start with what I'm wearing and then I'll get on with everything that I've got to share with you. And I've got my notebook in front of me, so I will be looking down at various points. So I am wearing the Deer and Doe Orage dress made in this absolutely beautiful embroidered um, stretch velvet fabric that I got from Fabric Godmother. I will put in pictures and videos of me wearing this dress. I absolutely loved wearing it and I chose to wear this on Christmas Day. Um, I cooked dinner and then I got changed so that I could wear it for um, the rest of Christmas and I just felt so good in it. It's a stretch velvet so it means it's super comfortable to wear. Really love this detail, this cutaway detail and actually it was more simple to sew up than I thought it was going to be um, because you overlay this bodice piece on top of this piece and then here and here um, you attach binding, that's how you finish this section and then you sort of top stitch it before you put the sleeves on and before you add this um, turtleneck detail. So it was actually a really straightforward pattern and I would highly recommend sewing it up. Um, it's got this really interesting skirt detail as well. Um, I don't know if you can see the skirt detail but it is um, more dropped at the front and then it goes up at the side and then it's dropped at the back as well. I love this fabric, it's so beautiful. They did have a little bit of this left on the Fabric Godmother website, so if they have still got it in stock, I'll link it down below, but it's so beautiful. It's a black velvet and these embroidered floral details are just so pretty. I absolutely love this fabric and I just felt so good in this dress on Christmas Day. Um, I'm really looking forward to being able to wear it more across the um, 2023 year. Um, I would definitely be wearing it out to dinner with friends and just any opportunity to pop this dress on. Um, this is probably up there in my top five favourite makes for 2022 and I will be doing a review of my sewing in 2022 and sharing with you my top five makes. This is definitely going to feature in there. I am going to find it really hard to pick five though because I've got so many things that I sewed up last year that I absolutely loved. That is what I'm wearing. So I'm just going to grab my list. Um, I'm not going to show you everything that I've sewn over the festive period because there's three things that I've already shared with you. Um, but this is one of them. Then I also sewed up the new craft house everyday dress in that gorgeous tw um, tulle fabric. I nearly said toile. Tulle fabric with glittery gold dots all over it. And I wore that on um, our second Christmas day when I went to see my family up north. I'll put a picture in of that dress as well. That's up there as one of my favourite things that I sewed up last year as well. Um, and then I also sewed up a Nico dress, True Bias Nico dress in this gorgeous, I've got it here actually, um, in this gorgeous um, like stretch metallic fabric that I got from Fabric Godmother. Got this from there, I got the tool fabric from there and I got this gorgeous like metallic, it's like a bronze metallic fabric um, and when it catches the light you get that shimmer from the bronze metallic detail absolutely beautiful. Ruby actually claimed this as a dress that she wanted to wear and I sewed it up um, using the long sleeves and then it's the maxi length and then you've got the side split as well on both sides and um, so that was really enjoyable to sew up. And then I also sewed up a couple of gifts. I don't have them in front of me because I've already gifted them but I sewed up a billy jumper for my mum using this um, fox um, it's a black fabric, cotton jersey, and it's got little foxes all over it and then little like plants all over it. And my mum's a nurse, so she often sets off to work super early in the morning. And on her way to work, she always see foxes. Um, so as soon as I got this fabric from Rainbow Fabrics, I knew that it needed to be turned into a jumper for my mum. Then I also sewed up a dress for a friend who's got a little girl who's 15 months old. So I used the 
uh, Poppy and Jazz pansy dress pattern. It's one of my favourite patterns to sew up for other people. Um, and I don't have a picture of the dress, but I do have a picture of my lovely mum wearing her Billy Fox jumper. I also sewed up a, um apron for my father-in-law and then I used my Cricut machine to put, I think we put um, Best Grandad or something on the front of it. I'll put a picture in of him wearing the um, apron. The pattern that I used was the free one by Helen's Closet, um, which is the Sam apron. And I just used some denim fabric um, so that he can wear it in his workshop. And then I also sewed up a cardigan for my mother-in-law. But again, I don't have pictures of that. It was just a plain navy cotton jersey that I got from John Lewis. And I used the grab a cup of cardi pattern. And I did the long cardigan version for her because she gets cold. So she could wrap herself in it. She popped it on on Christmas Day when she opened it. And it fit her really nicely, which is great. So I'm really pleased with that. I also had a couple of Dear and Doe Myosotis dresses that I wanted to sew up. So I've got them here. I thought I'd share them with you. And the first one, I've worn it in a video already, um, but both of these cotton fabrics were from Fleur Eels, um, and they were both Christmas themed. So it was Christmas houses on this gorgeous dark green background. Um, and I enjoyed wearing that to work. And then I just used these Pigeon Wishes um, Paige Joanna. I think they worked in collaboration with each other. It might have just been Paige Joanna buttons, but I used them on the fabric. And I just did the shorts version, so it stops at your knee. And I just did the short sleeve version as well. Um, and then the other version was using the Jungle Menagerie Christmas themed fabric. And again, I just did exactly the same Deer and Doe Myosotis with the short sleeves and the short gathered skirt. Um, and I really enjoyed wearing this as well. I wore this actually, we went to, um, one of our traditions as our family is to go and watch Panto on Christmas Eve. So I wore this to the pantomime on Christmas Eve. Um, and it was just really fun wearing a Christmas themed dress. Um, yeah, and they've got cute little hats on and Christmas glasses and that kind of thing. So they're sadly going to be packed away now until next year. But I'm really pleased that I got those dresses finished so that I could wear them over the festive period. Oh, then I sewed up. My husband's birthday is on the 21st of December. And I always sew him something up for his birthday or for Christmas. And this year I sewed him up a jumper using this gorgeous um, sweatshirting fabric. It's a fleece-backed sweatshirting that I bought from Somi Sunshine. They had an open evening event, which I was lucky enough to be able to go along to. Um, and I bought this fabric because I wanted to sew up a jumper and joggers set for myself. I think I bought three and a half metres of the fabric, so I had enough to turn it into a jumper for him because when I got home from that event and showed him the fabric, he fell in love with it and asked if I could turn it into something for him. And I've got a bit of a tradition of always sewing something for his birthday or Christmas. So I was really pleased when I had enough of this fabric left. I will put a picture in of him wearing this, but it's the I Am a Pollen Jumper and he's worn it so much um, since I gave it to him on his birthday. He absolutely loves it. So I'm definitely going to sew up some more for him. And I've got some fabric that I'm going to share today that I'm going to turn into an Apollon jumper for him along with some joggers. And then I wanted to turn it into a jumper and joggers set for myself. And that is exactly what I've done. So I used the Closet Core Mile End uh, sweater pattern. Um, it's got really interesting detail. So it's got this gorgeous sort of pleat detail on the sleeve. Um, and then the way that you, it's got a yoke on the back. Um, and then the way that the front and the back come together, you almost end, well, you do end up with this like diagonal along the front. It's a really interesting detail. And then I used some, a ribbing that was the perfect match for the jumper and for the cuffs and also for the neck band. I didn't use it for the hem band, but I used it for the neck band and I also used it for the cuffs. And I've got pictures of me wearing this as well. And then I also sewed up some plateau joggers. Now I've used that pattern a couple of times and I've sewn a few pairs of joggers up for myself and I've really liked the fit, but I don't know if it was the um, stretch in this fabric because it hasn't got as much stretch as some of the other fabric that I've used, or I don't know, um, but this pair actually feel a little bit snug on me. So I've actually ended up giving them to Ruby and Ruby absolutely loves wearing them. But yeah, I used the plateau joggers pattern for these. I think they've got a little mark on where she's worn them today, actually. Um, and I've just gone for the um, version that I've got elastic in the bottom. And then we've got some um, drawstring in the waistband and elastic in the waistband as well. So I'm pleased with those. Um, I'm going to try a different joggers pattern. I did ask for recommendations on Instagram for some joggers that are, see in the picture, that they stop quite low. 
um, and they feel quite tight on me and I want a jogger's pattern that's more roomy and go and sort of finishes more at my natural waist. So I asked for some recommendations of some joggers patterns. Lots of people suggested the Stella joggers, um, which is a Tilly in the Buttons pattern that comes in the, I think it comes in the stretch book, which I have got. So I'm gonna have a go at sewing those up to see if that's the kind of fit that I want. Um, but I just want a pair of joggers that are quite loose fitting, quite baggy um, and really roomy. Um, so they're not, they're more sort of slim fitting. Um, so I'm on the quest to find some joggers that are a little bit more um, sort of roomy. Um, and then the next thing I wanted to share with you that I've been sewing up is one of my favourite jumper patterns. It's a jumper pattern by Faye Studio Jepson and it's called the Wow Jumper Pattern. I love it because it's got this dropped shoulder detail and then this gorgeous ruffle detail. Um, and I absolutely love it. And this fabric is from New Craft House. I bought a couple of different jersey fabrics from them. They had like a jersey selection um, that they posted not too long ago. Um, and I really love this. It's a white background and then it's got these stalks or pelicans all over it. I think they're pelicans actually all over it. Um, and I've used this to sew up the um, Wow Jumper by Studio Jepson with the lovely drop shoulder detail and this really cute ruffle it's got cuffs on the sleeves and then there's a hem band as well. And then I've also been trying to adapt the wow jumper pattern because I saw a little girl um, come to a market before Christmas. She had this really gorgeous jumper on that had a dropped shoulder detail. It had this gorgeous applique um, like rainbow across the front um, and it had sort of a balloon sleeve but from the dropped shoulder detail. So I've used the wow jumper because it's got the dropped shoulder detail and then I've just used the billy um, sleeve pattern and I've just redraft, uh, yeah, I kind of adra adapted, I drafted a sleeve pattern based on the billy but also the wow jumper sleeve and I've sort of made it slightly large so you end up with that balloon sort of detail. You can see that that sleeve is quite big and it's gathered into the cuff. And then you've still got that drop shoulder detail. And then I had some rickrack in my stash. So I've just pinned it in place. I need to trim it so it looks like it's not even at the moment, but it's just the way I'm holding it. And I just need to trim this side. So I've pinned it in place. And then the next job I need to do is just um, stitch the rickrack in place to make the rainbow. And I've just used some red, orange, gold, green, pink and silver rickrack that I already had in my stash. And I'm really excited about getting that sewn up. I just want to really take my time stitching that rickrack in place um, really accurately. And then I'll have another lovely jumper that I can wear. So I've got the sleeves sewn on and everything else is finished. It's just that applique that I need to finish. So that's gonna be a job for the next couple of weeks. So I'm really excited about that. And then I talked in my Christmas catch up video about learning to knit. So I have started having a go at sewing, uh, sewing. I have had a go at starting to knit just using some plain blue um, wool that my mum got me for Christmas with some narrower needles. Uh, what size were these? These are six mil needles. And I'm gonna have a go at just knitting a scarf. And I'm really pleased with how that's going at the moment. It's been a lot neater. I haven't dropped any stitches. There's no holes in it. And I haven't added any stitches along here either. So I'm really pleased with how that's coming on. And actually I've been really enjoying knitting in bed um, for like half an hour before I go to sleep. And I found it quite a relaxing thing to do. So I'll keep you updated on how I'm getting on with that. And then once I've, um, sort of I feel a bit more confident and I've knitted the scarf then I'm going to have a go at either knitting a jumper or a really simple cardigan and I've had loads of pattern suggestions um, and loads of places suggested to me on where to look so thank you so much for all your advice with knitting as well. So that's all the things that I have been sewing up over the last couple of weeks. And um, the next thing I wanted to share with you was some fabrics that have arrived. Now I am on a fabric ban for 2023. Um, there's an app I'm gonna be talking about where I've been storing my fabrics so that I can see what fabrics I've actually got in my stash. And I was really surprised with how many fabrics I actually had. These fabrics I bought in 2022 and they've arrived in 2023, but I'm not buying any more um, fabrics at the moment. I'm still gonna be um, staying subscribed to the So Hilly Jane boxes and that's my little fabric once a month. And when it comes to my birthday and anything else, um, I'm gonna be asking for fabric vouchers, um, but I'm not going to be buying any more fabric. And I'm gonna see how long I can go without buying any fabrics and just shopping my stash. 
And now that I've got them all in one place, it's really easy for me to shop my stash. But I just wanted to share these fabrics. I've actually got a fabric and pattern haul video coming up. So I'm not going to share all the fabrics that have arrived. But I just wanted to share a couple of the, um, well, they're all gorgeous fabrics, but a couple of my favourite fabrics that have arrived. So these three fabrics I want to share with you are from Fleur et Eurs, and they are quilting fabrics. And the reason I bought these is because there was 40% off and I'd eyed these fabrics up for ages. Um, and with 40% off, I just thought it was a great bargain. So the first one, they're all quilting fabrics, but the first one's on a navy background and it's got all these pin cushion heads and then buttons, which I just think is super duper cute. I bought two and a half meters of this fabric and I'm sure you can guess before I even say, this is gonna become a Deer and Doe Myosotis dress. And I'm hoping that I've got enough to do the ruffle on the sleeve and the ruffle on the hem. Um, I think this will make a really cute dress. Um, I've not got plans to sew this up anytime soon. I think this will be a springtime project, but I just couldn't resist that fabric. I'd eyed it up for ages and because there was 40% off, um, it came up much cheaper than if there wasn't 40% off. Surprise, surprise. Um, and then the other two fabrics I'm going to turn into skirts. The first one you'll recognise if you've watched my videos before. Um, it's Happy Veg fabric and I've used this fabric in the past to sew up a skirt for Lola and I'm going to sew myself up a skirt. I'm going to use the free pattern by Alice Irvine for a flat fronted skirt and I'm going to turn this gorgeous carrot fabric into a skirt um, for myself so I can match Lola. And then the other fabric has got these gorgeous, I think they're beetroot. Somebody commented when I shared it on Instagram and said they thought they were radishes. They could be radishes. I'm going to go with beetroot. Um, I love them. They've got these really happy faces. And this, again, is going to become a flat fronted skirt. I've got a metre and a half of this one and a metre and a half of the carrot fabric. And then I've got one fabric that I'm going to share that I bought from Rainbow Fabrics. And the only reason I'm sharing this one, I did get a bumper selection from Rainbow Fabrics because they had 50% off, which was just brilliant. Um, there were some really gorgeous fabrics that I'd been eyeing up on Rainbow Fabrics that I managed to get half price. Um, this fabric I've got plans for in the next week or so. I'm gonna get it cut out later on today, but it's a velour fabric from Rainbow Fabrics and it's a navy fabric. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it. It's almost like a velvety texture to it. I've got three meters, it's a stretch fabric and I'm gonna turn this into some loungewear for James, my husband. I'm going to use the I am a pollen jumper for the top and then for the bottom I think I'm going to use the um, Hudson pants because I've sewn that up for him before and he really likes that pattern um, so yeah it's a really wide fabric I'll definitely have enough to turn it into a jumper and some joggers for him it's really tricky to show you the colour because of the lighting in here but it's just a navy fabric so I'm really excited about sewing that up for him and that's one of my sort of so resolutions for the year as well and um, to continue sewing not just for myself but also for my family and um, because they're really enjoying wearing things that I sew for them so that was all the fabrics that I wanted to talk about today I've got two patterns that I've been buying the first one is for a blog make for backstitch I bought the pattern but the fabric is coming from backstitch and they gave me a voucher for that because I am an ambassador for them and I'm going to be using the fabric to sew up this pattern by Friday Pattern Company and it's the Arlo track jacket and I've wanted to sew up a zip up um, sort of sports jacket for ages I've got some sweat shirting fabric coming from backstitch and I'm going to have a go at sewing it up for myself but one thing that I really love about this pattern is it's unisex so I can sew it up for my husband as well I'll just show you the line drawing so you can see what it looks like. It's got this lovely like sporty collar. I think you could have loads of fun colour blocking if you look at the lines um, for the pattern, the line drawings. You can see that you could have lots of fun colour blocking. Um, you need a 22 inch open ended zip for the jacket. Um, it's got long sleeves and it's got pockets as well. And it comes in sizes extra small up to 7X. So I've gone with some sweatshirting fabric. So in terms of recommended fabrics, they say that the jacket's designed for knits with at least 20% cross grain stretch. So French terry, sweatshirt fleece, ponty and other sturdy knits are ideal for this pattern. Knits that are really drapey are not really suitable for the pattern. So I'm looking forward to making that for myself. And once I've had a go at sewing it up for myself, I know that my husband would like me to sew him a zip up jacket too. 
And then the other pattern that I've been buying is a pattern by the Dressmaker's Closet, so the lovely Jane. And I've seen so many gorgeous versions of this shared over on Instagram in the last couple of weeks. And that's what's inspired me to get it. I really love this version. And that's the version that I'm going to sew up. And it's called the Nell T-shirt dress, which comes in sizes 6 to 22. There's three different length options and you can also sew up a T-shirt. Um, and I'm going to sew up this maxi version with the ruffle. I've got some leopard print pastel jersey fabric that I'm going to um, use to sew this up. Um, in terms of fabrics, they recommend stretch knits with at least 30% stretch horizontally and 35% stretch vertically. Um, so suggested fabrics are cotton jersey, viscose jersey, bamboo jersey um, and medium weight knits like French terry and scuba. They don't recommend heavier or bulkier knits. Um, and then these are the line drawings as well as that lovely maxi length um, dress on the front. And that's the version that I'm going to sew up, which I'm really excited about sewing up. So I just thought I'd mention those patterns that I've been buying. Um, on to the app that I've absolutely loved. So I've seen loads of people were testing this app when it first got released and loads of people have been raving about it. But I held off because I wasn't sure if I would actually use it. But then over Christmas, when I wasn't doing sewing, I felt really inspired to organise my patterns and also get all of my fabrics out. I think when I was planning my Make Nine plans, I just wanted to get all of my patterns and all of my fabrics out and start thinking about what I was feeling inspired to sew up. Um, and then I just thought, actually, the Stash Hub app would be the perfect app for me to log all of my fabrics and all of my patterns. So I have um, downloaded it and I have gone for the subscription um, app. So there's two different versions. You can get the free version and for the free version, you can upload 20 fabrics or patterns, one picture per record, and then you can um, sort only on the app. And that's the free version. I've got way more than 20 patterns and way more than 20 pieces of fabric. So I've gone for the Stash Hub Plus um, version which is £3.49 a month but you've got unlimited uploads so you can put as much fabric and as many patterns on there as you want. Um, you can use multiple pictures and you can sort and filter as well and what I really love about the Stash Hub is you can put all of your fabrics on there, all of your patterns but you can also um, record your plans which I think is a great way of recording what you're thinking of doing and you can add the patterns that you've uploaded and you can also add the fabrics that you've uploaded and I've already got five or six um, sort of plans on my stash hub. I've got most of my fabrics on there and I have to admit that I was really surprised with how much fabric I've actually got on there. But it has also made me realise and sort of helped me to feel motivated and inspired to start sewing with those fabrics. Because currently they're just stored in drawers and I don't have them on display. So having them on the stash hub app means that they are there as a visual reminder of what the fabrics look like and what I've actually got in my stash. And I do feel a lot more motivated to um, sew the fabrics that I've already got. I haven't got all the patterns on there because I've literally got hundreds of patterns. That's going to take me much longer to put the patterns on there. And with Stash Up, it's completely up to you how you use it as to how much detail you go into it. So with my fabrics, I've added um, a detail, well, a title that describes what the fabric is. I've included whether it's woven or stretch, how much fabric I've got, and if I can remember what shop I got it from. And that's it. But you can add details about whether it's been cut, whether it's been pre-washed, um, loads of different things. But I haven't gone into that much detail. I've just got the fabrics on there. With the patterns, I do want to put more detail on there. So I do want to put what the sizing is, what notions you need, um, what type of fabric they recommend. So it is going to take me a bit longer to add the patterns. But you might have noticed behind that I have actually got labels on my baskets now. I've sorted all of my patterns. So I've got like all my jumpers and dresses together, all my children's patterns together, all my coat patterns together, etc. So it's a lot easier for me when I think I would like to sew some trousers today. I can just get that basket that's got all the trouser patterns in. But I'm hoping to get all of my patterns onto Sash Shop as well so that it makes it a bit easier for me to see what patterns I've got and what fabrics will go really well with those patterns as well. And that takes me on to a challenge that's being run by Stash Hub over on Instagram. It's running between the 1st and the 31st of January. It's a no sewing required um, challenge. Um, what they're asking us to do is to share our first project plan for 2023. And I've already shared my uh, project. I'm going to be sewing up a Wednesday Adams style dress for Lola. 
spoiler alert I've already finished sewing it up and she absolutely loves it I've got this black rose lace fabric that I got from rainbow fabrics ages ago I got four meters of it um, and I've used that fabric to sew up a Wednesday Adams dress for Lola um, so I've shared those plans on Instagram they want us to tag stash hub and use the hashtag um, hashtag stash hub and then there's a prize up for grabs which is one year of stash hub plus for free so you don't have to pay the 349 a month and that's for a whole year so it's a great prize um up for grabs so you just need to share your first sort of plans over on instagram and make sure that you tag stash hub and use that hashtag stash hub um, to be in with a chance of winning that subscription um, I wanted to give a shout out to a um, sewing vlogger that I've recently discovered. And the reason I discovered her on YouTube was because I was looking for some information about the Nell t-shirt and dress pattern from the Dressmaker's Closet. And Debs has done a review of the pattern. So her channel is Sew With Deb. Um, she's got various um, videos over on her channel, like... Um, fabric and pattern hauls and just chatty videos she's talking about makes that she's done and then she also talks about the nail t-shirt dress pattern and I watched that video and I found it really interesting to find out her views and take on this pattern um so I'll link her channel down below if you haven't um discovered her already and you haven't given her a follow so you can go and check out her channel and then the final thing I like to finish with is just some sewing plans that I've got. So I've definitely got plans to get this cut out today and then get this started. So I'm going to use the I Am Apollo jumper and then the Hudson pants for men um, to make a loungewear um, sort of outfit for my husband. I want to get this jumper. I need to be careful so I don't pull off the pins. But I want to get the applique finished on this jumper so I can start wearing it. Um, I've got the dungarees that I keep talking about, um, the True Bias, I can't remember the name of the dungaree pattern, but it's the new dungaree pattern. I've got them cut out in denim. I just need to sit down and get them sewn up. And then I'm also going to be sewing up a cape for Ruby. So I've got this gorgeous, fluffy marshmallow um, fake fur fabric that I got from Felicity Fabrics. That's one of my make nine fabrics for this year. And Ruby's requested a cape. So I'm gonna be sewing up a cape. So I won't get that sewn up anytime soon, but I will definitely get that cut out. And then I've also got the Nina Lee Carmel uh, jumpsuit in one of my Make Nine fabrics from last year. I just need to insert the zip and then stitch the lining. Um, I've had that waiting for a zip for about a month now. So I just need to sit down and get the zip in and finish attaching the lining. And then I'm also going to be carrying on with my knitting as well. So that was everything I wanted to share with you today. I hope you've enjoyed hearing what I've been getting up to seeing some of my fabrics that I've been buying and patterns and also hearing some of my plans. Let me know what you've been getting up to, if you've got any suggestions for the fabrics that I've shared, even though I've got most of the fabrics I've got plans for. Um, and if you've got any um, top tips with knitting for me, do let me know those down below as well. I'm going to carry on mastering those um, sort of skills that I've been learning in the last couple of weeks and I'm really enjoying it. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I really would appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. You'll get notified of when I bring out my next video. Thank you, as always, for watching. Take care, and I'll be back soon with another video. Bye.